Today, we are going to discuss market failures and the role of government. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what a market failure is, analyze the effect of market failures on market outcomes, and describe how government policies can mitigate the effects of market failures. A market failure occurs when the market fails to generate an efficient allocation of resources. This inefficiency results in losses by producers or consumers or both. Let's take a look at how this can work in more detail. Recall from our last lesson that in a well-functioning competitive market, the equilibrium outcome occurs where the quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. At this outcome, the marginal benefit to consumers of the last unit consumed equals the marginal cost to sellers of the last unit produced. In addition, in a well-functioning market, total benefits to buyers and sellers are maximized. Buyer's benefits, or consumer surplus, equals the difference between what they are willing to pay and what they have to pay which is the area below the demand curve and above the market price. Seller's benefits, or producer surplus, equals the difference between seller's costs and the price for which they sell their product, which is the area above the supply curve and below the market price. When a market fails, it fails because some of these benefits are lost. At the heart of any market failure is a mismatch between the marginal benefits from the last unit of the good consumed and the marginal costs of producing that unit. This mismatch can be caused by a number of things, including market power, information advantages, and externalities. We will take a look at this last case in more detail. An externality is a cost or benefit associated with the production or consumption of a good that is not borne by the sellers or buyers of the good. As a result, in the case of an externality, either the market supply curve does not capture all of the costs associated with the production of a good, or the market demand curve does not reflect all of the benefits from consuming a good. An example of an externality is pollution. If production of a good generates pollution, then there is a cost to everyone who feels its effects. We can illustrate these costs by adding another cost curve to this graph. The supply curve represents the cost to producers of making the good or the marginal private costs. The marginal social cost curve, which is above the supply curve, includes the cost of pollution. The market will come to equilibrium at the point where consumers' private benefits from the last unit consumed just equal producers' private costs of the last unit produced. To find the total benefits from this market outcome, as before, we add the consumers and producer surplus. However, because everyone who suffers from the pollution bears a cost from it, we have this to subtract the cost of pollution as well to find the total benefits to everyone in the market. The total cost of pollution will be the total quantity of pollution produced, which is proportional to the market output, multiplied by the per unit cost of pollution, which is the vertical distance between the supply curve and the marginal social cost curve. As a result of the externality, total benefits are reduced and the market outcome is inefficient. Because pollution adds costs to everyone in the market, it is known as a negative externality. In markets with negative externalities, the market quantity is higher than the efficient quantity because the market participants do not incorporate all of the costs of their activities into their decision. The optimal quantity of a good that generates negative externalities is where the marginal social cost curve crosses the demand curve. At this quantity, the price is higher to reflect the cost of the externality. Externalities can be positive as well. In markets with positive externalities, the total benefits from the good exceed the benefits to the people who are buying the good. 
For example, if I invest a lot in making my house and yard look nice, I benefit, but my neighbors may benefit as well from increased property values. In markets with positive externalities, the marginal social benefits from a good are greater than the marginal private benefits. In these markets, the market quantity is lower than the optimal quantity. Because markets with externalities generate inefficient outcomes, there is a potential role for government. Government's goal in intervening in a market with externalities is to generate a more efficient outcome. There are a few ways that the government can do this. The first option is regulation. In the case of goods that generate negative externalities, the government can simply impose limits on the amount of the good that can legally be produced. In the case of positive externalities, the government can provide a portion of the good itself to help the market reach the optimal quantity. The government's second option is to either tax or subsidize the production or consumption of the good that generates the externality. In the case of a negative externality, the government can set a tax equal to the marginal cost of the externality. This tax will increase seller's costs and will shift the supply curve up. If the tax is set at the right level, seller's private costs will coincide with the social costs of the good, and the tax will result in an efficient level of the externality generating good. In the case of a positive externality, the government can subsidize consumption of the externality generating good. The value of the subsidy should equal the marginal benefit from the externality. This will increase the demand for the good and move the market quantity closer to the optimal quantity. The government's final option is to create a market for the externality itself. For example, the government can require that before a firm can produce a good that results in pollution, the firm has to buy a permit for each unit of pollution that it generates. As with a tax, the need to buy a permit will increase firms' costs, shifting the supply curve up and moving the market quantity closer to the optimal quantity. Pollution permit markets have been proposed as one way to reduce emissions of carbon dioxide associated with global warming. They were also used in the United States to limit emissions of acid rain generating pollutants from the mid-1990s through the first decade of the 2000s. Unfortunately, as you can see in this graph, the market for these permits collapsed after 2009 as a result of a court decision that made the future of the market uncertain. This concludes this lesson on externalities and the role of government. We will examine other types of market failures and the role of government in mitigating them in another lesson.